What control center should you use for your astrophotography rig? I use here the ASI Air Plus, or many others use the previous generation, the ASI Air Pro, to control their ZW based systems, like with just ZW branded cameras and a ZW branded focuser here. Um, other people prefer to use a PC so that they can take full advantage of systems like Nina. And with Nina version 2.0 getting uh, released in beta um, these days, the advantages of Nina over a more simple solution like the SI Air become a bit more obvious, especially with the new sequencer version 2. And so for that, at least for the rig where I have a Celestron focuser, so I am not able to use the SI Air, I want to use a PC. I've bought a new PC for that purpose. Let's go into the details. Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to my balcony. As you know, uh, a lot of my channel is about being lazy and by that I really mean being efficient when you're doing astrophotography. Like ideally I want to press a button and go to bed while the rig does all of the work for me and I can wake up in the morning and come to the balcony and see that, that the rig is back to pointing north, back to its home position, the camera is warmed, everything's done. And that's easily accomplished with systems like the ASI Air, the ASI Air Plus, or other systems like Stellar Mates or um, AstroBerry, so Raspberry Pi kind of based uh, systems. That being said, I am a big fan of the free and open source astrophotography software called Nina, and I actually contributed a lot of our sweat and tears into uh, that software uh, by you know, contributing in terms of code. And so I have a vested attachment to that piece of software, and especially with its new 2.0 version, which you can now download as a beta, uh, it's extremely powerful to really fine-tune all of your sequences, especially if you're imaging multiple targets in a single night. It also happens to be blazingly fast in terms of uh, reducing the overhead between your sub-exposures and maximizing your uh, imaging time. The only problem with Nina is that it does not run on a Raspberry Pi, it runs only on Windows machines. And up to now, I've been using Windows machines like this one, like the Intel NUC here, or NUC, whatever we call it. And this uh, little thing contains, a, uh, it's old now, it contains a sixth generation uh, Intel CPU. It has eight gigs of RAM and I think 128 gigabytes of uh, SATA SSD. So it's pretty, pretty old, but it works quite well. And I've been using other similar computers, uh, but from a Japanese manufacturer called SkyNew that perform very similarly and work very similarly. The problem is it's not quite big, but it's not small, especially when you compare it to the ASI Air. And it is heavy, quite heavy actually. And so it doesn't really, uh, plus it's like difficult to mount on top of a telescope. And the biggest disadvantage that I have with this uh, computer is that it runs on 19 volts DC. So I cannot simply use the 12 volt power output from my mobile battery that I use for astrophotography. And I have to use a specific power adapter and I can really only use it reliably at home. I cannot take it away with me on astro imaging trips. And uh, I was looking into such computers recently and this little puppy came about. <laughs> Look at this. It's uh, the size of a wallet, basically. It's pretty small, but I really liked almost everything that I saw with this computer. Um, it has eight gigs of RAM. It, was, it has 128 gigabytes of uh, eMMC storage, which is not as good as SSD, but good enough. Plus, it's easily expandable. You can just pop, uh, like remove four screws at the back and just uh, get inside and put in an NVMe SSD instead. So it's expandable in that, uh, in that sense. It also has really good features in terms of four USB uh, 3 ports which is great. It has HDMI outputs, I don't care about that. It has network um, connectivity as well, which is good. It has Wi-Fi, uh, multi-band, and it has a micro SD card um, storage input if you like to save your images into an, uh, a micro SD card. 
and then actually bring that micro SD card to read on your computer. So it's quite powerful, it's quite small, it's very light, and the, the, in, the processor insta inside is the Intel uh, Celeron J4155, which while it's not blazingly fast, it's actually just as fast as the old CPU 6th generation Intel that I have in there, are and almost as fast as uh, another similar computer that I have, which has a 7th generation Intel CPU Core i5, right? And this is a Core i5 as well. So uh, things have progressed and uh, embedded CPUs can now be quite reasonably fast. And I've actually uh, been using it quite a bit and it's just snappy. I haven't really like had any pain in using this little computer. It doesn't feel like I have to wait for things to happen on it. It just feels like a normal computer and I haven't had any uh, issues with it. The only downside that I see is that uh, the power input is actually a USB-C power input that does not support uh, the uh, PD or I think power delivery protocol for USB-C. So it will not be able to negotiate voltages for USB-C and it uses a propriety, proprietary kind of uh, adapter but it's actually very easy for us uh, as photographers since we have 12 volt batteries to start with to buy a, a, a very simple like DC to USB-C cable to power the computer and this is what I've done I have a DC to USB-C cable that's uh, not supposed to be used that way but it actually does work and I can simply plug it into my external battery and I was able to power this computer. I kind of took a leap of faith that it wouldn't burn out the computer and it didn't. It worked perfectly well, which is great. Um, and you know, that means that in addition to all of the equipment, I can power this computer from 12 volts, meaning it's very transportable. And this computer name is the Melee uh, Quieter 2 because it is a fanless device. It doesn't even have the fan inside. But for now, I have yet to see how well it will perform in summer because of that. But at least for now, it hasn't had issues. But then it's kind of autumn slash winter. There's a very similar computer with very similar specs from a different manufacturer called Chewy. Um, I love that name. Uh, that uh, has an even smaller form factor but only two USB 3 ports so and also the same kind of USB-C input uh, so, but for now I decided to go with this one because of the four USB ports there's also another small form factor computer but that's more expensive from ECS um, which has, I believe, a Ryzen embedded processor that is far more powerful than this one but up to now I felt that this is more than enough you can now see the computer as I've mounted it on my Celestron C6 which with Hyperstar. Every USB port is in use. So one is going to the guide camera, another one is going to the Celestron focuser, another one is going to the mount via an RS232 uh, cable. And this mount is actually a mount that I just bought to use because it was too cheap to be true. It's an, uh, an Ioptron SEM60, which is amazing. And the last USB port actually goes to the camera that's within the lens hood of this telescope since I'm using it with Hyperstar. And there is something really cool that I did as well is that this uh, little computer has Windows 10 Pro uh, with it by default, which is awesome because that means you don't have to do any shenanigans to get uh, Windows Remote Desktop, RDP, kind of working on this computer. And so I have actually a Windows Remote Desktop set up on here so I can um, access it on my local network. I also have um, Chrome Remote Desktop set up on this. And I also have uh, set this computer up so that um, I have a, a startup task that starts the Wi-Fi hotspot on this computer. So it will connect to my home Wi-Fi, but at the same time it starts a Wi-Fi hotspot so I can connect to that Wi-Fi hotspot from any computer directly, including in an area where I don't have any network coverage, and then control this PC uh, without any issue and if ever I lose the Wi-Fi hotspot I just need to restart the PC for it to appear again. So I have really a foolproof kind of setup. I can always connect to it and control it via remote desktop or Chrome remote desktop depending on my on the conditions where I image at and whether there is network available or not and um, and just control everything from the computer nothing to be done. As you can see I also used a small uh, DC 12 volt 
to USB-C adapter and it's working just uh, perfectly without issue. The uh, uh, other power piece is actually going towards the camera for cooling the camera. Now some of the things that I did, did to set up this computer are a bit tricky. For instance, getting the computer hotspot to turn on automatically every time I start Windows uh, was not that easy. I had to create a script and put it in the startup options to do that. I'll put some links with some pointers on how to do that in the description. Also, this computer is unfortunately compatible with Windows 11, which means that sooner or later Microsoft will try to force me to update to Windows 11. That's I see that as a drawback rather than an advantage because everything is working fine on Windows 10 and Windows 11 scares me for now. I will also leave links in the description if you wish to buy this computer. However, if you do buy this computer or the, one of the alternatives that I mentioned, so um, this computer as well as the Chewy computer with the same processor, both seem to have a USB-C uh, port for power input and you will be responsible to finding, for finding a cable that will work where, well for you to power this, um, this computer. The ECS version with the Ryzen embedded processor, which is much more powerful, also has four USB 3 ports and I believe one additional USB 2 port, so really awesome, um, accepts directly DC input from what I've seen in uh, their uh, product pictures, which is uh, great. But yeah, be aware of this power um, adapter here that you will need um, a, a power cable um, or a, an adapter like I had on the uh, like I showed you on the Hyperstar telescope. Uh, note that the, the PC actually also comes there are two screw holes at the back here and it came with a mounting plate for people who want to mount it like at the back of their monitors and I guess if you are handier than I am because I am terrible at everything at anything that is mechanical in nature you would be able to find a way to mount it properly on uh, any setup that you like in whatever way you like I definitely don't have this skill I'll also link to some uh, videos that I have where I set up a computer from scratch, including uh, installing ASCOM, for instance, that I've done in the past, the process to really get your Windows computer ready for Nina and for your, all your, your equipment hasn't changed, so I link to a video on that up above. And I will also uh, link to another video where I've actually set it up on this little computer as well, so that uh, automatically over my home network, if the home network is available, any picture that is captured by the uh, by my Nina software, it works also with any other astrophotography software for Windows, will be automatically synced and sent down to my processing PC that I have two floors down below that is much faster for processing pictures. That way I can you know, wake up in the morning, I don't even need to look at my setups or at my telescopes, I can just go down to my processing PC and all of the images are already on there. So I'll link to another video about that above if that's something that's you that interests you in setting up, setting up your computer. But you can see everything is made to be as simple and as efficient as possible and I dare say even more efficient than the ASI Air uh, because like even the file transfer is automated. I had nothing to do. And it's been really a pleasure using this little uh, computer. Um, my uh, Newtonian telescope is actually being repaired at Vixen, but once it comes back, I want to use it with Nina as well and keep the ESI Air for this more mobile setup here. And uh, because of that, I've actually ordered a second one of those computers. I really, really enjoy uh, that little thing. Uh, so with that, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, I hope this has been useful. If you already have your control center working and ready to go, remember that in French, le mieux est l'ennemi du bien, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if you were considering an upgrade or a side grade, because this is not more powerful than I had before, it's just smaller and lighter uh, and runs on 12 volts. Uh, but yeah, if you're considering changing your control center and the ESA Air doesn't work for you, for instance, because you don't like the way that it works, it has too few features, you like Nina's advanced se sequencer, or you're using a focuser from a different brand, like I am with my Celestron uh, setup here, then maybe something like this could work for you. Um, maybe even better than uh, a Raspberry Pi setup like uh, Stellarmate or Astroberry. The choice is yours and I just wanted to let you know about the alternative and to let you know that the uh, low powered processor in there, the J4125, is plenty powerful for our hobby and I had no issues with that. Um, so 
Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel but you like astronomy and astrophotography, feel free to go down below and consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon. You can also leave a comment and tell YouTube that this video is interesting by, by leaving a like on the video uh, as you see fit or a dislike, you know, if that's your jam. Um, thanks again for watching. As always, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.